on this week's two minute tip how to stop that dreaded earworm from destroying all your corn. So we've got our fall sweet corn here behind me, the ambrosia variety, and we've got silks, we've got tassels, pollination's almost over with, and those ears should start filling out soon. And that's the time when those corn earworms are gonna get in there and start doing damage on top of those corn ears. Now the corn earworm can be found in a variety of colors. You'll see some that are green, some that are brown, but it's basically the larval form of a moth that likes to lay eggs on your corn plants. And those moths are actually attracted to the smell of those corn silks, and that's where they end up usually laying their eggs. So what's the solution? Well, there's a lot of conflict in reports out there on whether BT does any good at controlling corn earworms or not. But the consensus is that the preferred organic control for corn earworms is this stuff right here called spinosad. Now much like BT, spinosad is derived from a naturally occurring bacteria. And it was actually discovered in 1985 in the Virgin Islands in an old rum mill where they found it inside of some sugarcane stalks. Now unlike BT, which is only effective if the worms or the larva ingest it, the spinosad here works on contact and through ingestion. And studies have shown that insects and other garden pests are not able to build a resistance to the spinosad as they are some other organic controls that we use. Just like all of our other pest control products, the spinosad here is concentrated and we have it available in quart and gallon sizes. For the mixing ratio, you simply mix two ounces of this with one gallon of water. The recommended application rate for spinosad on corn is about one gallon per 150 to 200 row feet of corn. So one gallon of this mixed is usually plenty for this little spot here behind me. Now when you're spraying this spinosad on your corn, you wanna make sure you get really good coverage on the silks and the tassels where those earworms are most likely to be. It's not gonna do you much good to spray the, the base of the plant or the leaves, but you wanna really make sure that you get it on those silks and those tassels. So once those silks start to appear, I'll start a program where I'll apply this at least every four to five days until that corn is ready to harvest. So if you've had problems with corn earworms in the past, start a preventative program, start spraying that spinosad as soon as the silks appear and keep those corn ears nice and clean and pretty for harvest. I hope you enjoyed this week's two minute tip. We'll see you next week.